slowly but surely this house is coming together and one of these days you'll see something really pretty behind me on the wall but for now you get baseball hats and a guitar What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach where we talk about real things because it's the real, honest, hard, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. But before we get into something deep, I wanna share with you my experience walking into this house for the very first time. Check it out. This is interesting. <laughs> Look at this door. Holy smokes. <laughs> it's like a lodge. Oh, wow. One of the rooms. Whoa. Here's that beautiful bathroom. Another room to the right. Lots of daylight. Oh, this is the master. And then another room here. That one's a little smaller. Hey! Holy huge pantry. Oh, this must be washer. Yep, this is washer dryer room. Back door. Storage. God, it is so good. This is not my forever home, but I have no complaints and it is fun and quirky and it is so wonderful. It's not exactly what I expected, but it's definitely better than I expected in so many ways, in so many times. That is how God leads. I can personally tell you that the last couple months for me have felt like he isn't leading. I've felt like I can't hear him. I've doubted my own faith in so many ways and I've questioned God's goodness and wondered where he was. I felt like he left me underwater in an impossible situation where I can't even see the path in front of me. I'm sure many of you can relate, especially this year, when circumstances have been so turned upside down. None of us expected 2020 to look like this. And yet here we are. And has God changed? Not at all. Have our foundations been shaken and our perspectives and ideas of who God is changed? Probably. Has our faith been tested? Absolutely. But God is good by his definition. And that definition may not be what we expect it to be or want it to be, but it's better. I don't have a full definition of his goodness, but I look forward to learning more about his goodness my entire life and beyond because he is better than anything we could ever expect or imagine. This morning I was meditating a little bit on Psalm 77 where the psalmist actually starts off in pain and then questions God because he can't see God's goodness in his life or he can't see how God might be moving in his life. He can't call to mind anything that God has done for him. So he reminds his soul of God's goodness and unchanging nature by recounting what God has done for his ancestors in the past. The Old Testament stories specifically focusing on when God led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt by way of the Red Sea that parted miraculously so that they could walk through on dry ground, led by God, but through their leadership of Aaron and Moses. 
Now, was God leading in that circumstance? Yeah, absolutely. Could they see him? No. Did they have any idea where they were going? Away from Egypt. That's pretty much the only information that they knew for sure, is that they were walking away from slavery, but they couldn't necessarily see the path in front of them. And I love the last couple verses of this psalm that says this, starting in verse 19. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Now, again, from personal experience, I can tell you that this summer has felt very much like I can't see God's footprints leading me. I can't even see the way ahead of me. So it's actually felt like I have been underwater, not walking on a dry path through the water. But we serve the God of the impossible, so far be it from me to assume that he will never have me walk underwater and let him be the God of the impossible and let him lead me where I can see no path, where I cannot sense him, where I cannot see him, where I may even have a hard time hearing him, where I might feel so much pressure being underwater, where I might feel like I can't even breathe, but he is the sustainer. He is the God of the impossible. He will lead you through any circumstance, even if it's not like you wanted or expected. There's a New Testament example that is pretty familiar to most of us, where Jesus tells the disciples to take them across the sea. And the disciples and Jesus get in this boat. Jesus falls asleep and a storm comes out of nowhere. The disciples are panicking, fearing for their lives, and Jesus is sleeping. They didn't see the way out of this. They didn't see how they were gonna make it to the other side, but Jesus already said that they were gonna make it to the other side. God may show us what's ahead of us without telling us how to get there. He's done that pretty often for me. Other times, I don't know where I'm going and I have to trust him to lead me step by step to a place that he will show me, just like Abraham. But in this story, the disciples wake Jesus up. They're panicking, thinking that they're gonna lose their lives, wondering if Jesus even cares about them. I promise you, I've had so many storms and felt the exact same way. But when Jesus gets up, he says, where is your faith? And then he calms the storm with a word. But I want you to notice something real quick. And there are other gospel accounts of this story. But in Matthew chapter 8, you look at the context. Jesus had just healed. Jesus had just raised a little girl from the dead. And the disciples had witnessed this. And now they're in a boat in a storm. And they think that Jesus is going to let them die? Where is their faith? Likewise, in this Psalm 77, the psalmist knows that God has come through before, so he will come through again. So even when his own soul doubts it, he goes back and remembers. And for myself, this happened on the vlog while I was recording the other week when we talked about Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith. I needed encouragement. I didn't want to show up. But when I did, while I was speaking to you, the Holy Spirit brought Hebrews 11 to mind and renewed my faith by reminding me of his faithfulness to my ancestors in the faith. God is faithful, period. Just because it doesn't look like it in your immediate circumstance doesn't mean that suddenly he is not faithful. All it means is that your circumstance needs a reminding, that your soul needs a reminding of who he truly is. Because my friends, this is more a battle of your frame of thinking and your perspective than anything else. The Bible calls us to renew our minds and be transformed. That is the process of becoming more and more God conscious and less and less self sin and circumstance conscious. I don't mean be unaware, but I do mean where is your focus? This is not about condemnation or even rebuke. This is a love reminder that you are a son and a daughter of God and that he cannot forget his children, that you are the most precious thing to him. And it may not look like you expect, but he hasn't changed. He's always good. So if you can't remember a time when he was good to you, then get in the word and remind your soul of when he was good to those who came before you and remind your soul that he is unchanging and that if he did it before, he will do it again and hold on to those testimonies until he does. This is his promise to you. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies are never ending. His faithfulness is like the sun rising every morning. Even if the sun is behind a cloud, it's there. 
just as God's faithful, even when you can't figure out how he's being faithful to you in your seemingly impossible circumstance. He is faithful. And I challenge you to seek out his definition of his goodness. I challenge you to be honest with the Lord. Ask him to help you see his goodness all around you every day and be grateful for what you see because gratitude leads to more evidence of his goodness and more evidence of his goodness leads to more gratitude and it becomes easier the more you focus on him. So I may not have any idea where he's leading me or how he's leading me, but I know he's leading me. And when I feel like I'm underwater and the pressure and the impossibility of living and breathing underwater starts to weigh on me, I can look back at his faithfulness before and I can look back at his faithfulness for all of time. I can find a way to give thanks in every circumstance and to rejoice always. And you have my full permission to remind me of how he's been good to me in the past if you ever catch me forgetting and I'll do the same for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with a friend who needs it. If you want to support this ministry in any way, there are links in the description box below and in the link in my Instagram bio. Have a great week. I love you and I'm praying for you. I'll see you next time. Bye.